Amolu Washiwa Bashala, a librarian from Nigeria working at the British Library in London on a project tag, Big Data and Libraries. The video you're about to watch focuses on digital archiving. The aim of the video is to provide basic knowledge about digital archiving for librarians and archivists in training, especially in Africa. Digital archiving starts with digitization of archival materials, which involves the use of technology, both hardware and software in managing valuable records that are born digital and those converted into digital form. Materials for digital archiving should be original, authentic, reliable and usable. Digital archiving involves planning, creation of digital objects, acquisition or ingestion, cataloging, preservation and storage, access for use and reuse and evaluation. However, the processes can vary depending on the type of material. To uh, plan well for digitization, one needs to spend quite a bit of time on scoping for projects. And this would involve answering quite a few questions, such as what are we to digitize and why is this important? Who is the audience uh, we're digitizing this for? How are we going to achieve the digitization? What access would look like? And what do we know about the collection? Do we have metadata available and of course to consider what the budget will be, what the condition of the collection is and are there any rights issues with the collection. Archiving ensures preservation of valuable records for long-term use, efficient retrieval of important records for use and reuse. It prevents loss of valuable records. From an archiving point of view, the main things we're worried about is uh, um, Web resources rot, disappear very quickly. So uh, we did some studies on um, uh, the stuff we've collected over the years and whether it's still on the web now. And we found that even within one or two years, more than half of the content we'd archived had already disappeared from the live web. So um, the risk we so it's not just about collecting a snapshot of how the stuff looked at a given time. It's also the fact that most of this content simply disappears within a, a year or two. Of, of being published and we found that uh, when you're 10 years out there's less than about 5% of content is still on the web un, you know, unchanged as it was um, 10 years ago. Archiving ensures the provision of records that can tell stories about events, individuals, people or organisations and archival materials can be used as evidence during legal proceedings to ensure justice. During preparation for digital archiving, there is the need for a careful consideration of both hardware and software that will be used to avoid digital obsolescence. When you have a book, you can put a book on a shelf very safely for a long term, long time without anything happening to it. But if you have a digital object and you don't check it regularly, it can uh, become inaccessible very quickly and that's because the world around it changes so quickly. So the, the means that you needed to have in order to access it may not be available anymore but we may not be aware of it. So what we need to do is we need to um, what we call characterize it. So we need to make a, a, an inventory of all the very important properties of this uh, digital object and then we need to keep a watch and see how the world changes and whether there's a certain a risk arising that may affect this digital object so when we find out that um, for example a file format is no longer supported or a license for a software product expires and we have no right anymore to access it then we need to think about what are the preservation actions that we need to take in order to ensure the long-term access or the continued access of this and so what we have is we have constant watchfulness and we have a uh, as I said earlier, the provenance where we're going from possibly one migration to another so we keep the thing accessible. Or uh, alternatively, if we don't want to migrate, for example, we could say we, we emulate the platform on, on which the digital object was used. So if, I'm, if I have an old computer system um, and this computer system is just not used anymore, but there are lots of files that all used to run on it, what I can do Instead, I can take a modern computer system and I can emulate that old system on it 
and that means then on the emulation platform I can still use all those digital objects. Hardware used for digital archiving include computers, scanners, cameras and storage devices. The scanners, the main scanners we use, the Zoichel 1200 scanners, they're a scanner that has a glass platen, but that platen doesn't have to be used. We can scan without the glass on those machines. So for more fragile items, stuff that we have to be particularly careful with, those machines are very good for that sort of work. Also the software will correct out the curvature in the pages to a, to a, to a large degree. Um, the beds are highly adjustable, so regardless of the, the size of the item, we can, we can get them to, to, to sit on there nicely. The larger machines like the one behind me, although we can scan without the glass, it, it's a little more restrictive on a machine like this. However, on these machines, the beds are highly adjustable. The pressure of both the glass and the bed itself can be adjusted to a very high degree to make sure that there's no damage to the material. But some material is sent to us and we are told you cannot touch the surface with the glass. So this will dictate which machines we use for which projects. As I was speaking about the collection care issues earlier. Also within one project we might have different types of material. This is the uh, machine we would use for um, any cut sheet items or loose sheet items. Uh, a lot of projects that, that we get um, people sending could be anything from card files, um, we might have material that's actually been cut so we can feed it through as, as individual sheets and this automatically scans both sides at the same time, it can auto detect colour and black and white or grey scale and then we can output to all the different formats from this as well. The operator only has to select whichever job with the predetermined job settings in. So they select them, it defaults to open, we size the tray at the bottom. It has ultrasonic sensors which detect there's paper there and will also detect uh, two sheets feeding at once as well and will give us a warning. So when we're happy it's loaded okay, we can then start the batch scan, which I've just done. And as you can see, that's very fast. It's, I haven't actually got the auto-rotate on, but we can turn the auto-rotate on. We don't always have it on because sometimes you have images that aren't meant to be rotated. We do that manually afterwards. But as you can see, it's captured front and back. If it's identified some colour, it'll capture in colour. If it hasn't identified colour, it'll capture in uh, the black and white or grey scale. Uh, card files, it's actually got um, ignore blank page on, so it's not captured the back because there's nothing on there and it's just captured the front of the cards. We would then, once it's finished, just click on the finalise button, and that actually, if you can see this, it's starting to process the batch, and that will be creating, from the job setting, either we've asked it to just send a TIFF or a multi-TIFF to a particular folder on the network. It might be creating a PDF, and it might be doing the OCRing of that PDF as well, and delivering it to a folder we've specified already for that job, or someone to then check the work and post-process it further. The date the archival object was born should be in the ISO 6001-2004 standard. The ISO 8601-2004 standard format provides a consistent method for version tracking over the years. It is also important to state the context in which a digital object was created. For an estimation of the file size for an image, the formula displayed can be used. For easy access either globally or locally, archival materials can be deployed by adapting the Open Archive Information System, ISO standard 147121-2003. See ICSE standards for more information. The key, I think, first step if you want people to access your information is think about who are the likely user groups that may want to come to you um, and where are they likely to find the information that you want to get them to access. So having your own library catalogue or archival catalogue or sort of a page of information of the collections that you have is quite important. Uh, but equally you have to make sure the other services can pick up the information. So for example, when you design your website it's quite important to think about how can Google and other search engines index that website and to have enough information on there that's sort of set up in a way that Google can find the information. The key word here is search engine optimization. 
And there are quite a lot of websites that sort of provide basic information on how to set this up. So it's effectively thinking outside the existing library catalog and say, what are my users using? Are there social networks that are perhaps prominent in the country that you're in? Or are there sort of um, tools that are provided by publishers and by others? Digital objects, DOI, should be obtained for archival material. A DOI is a special persistent tag for an archival material. DOIs link the user to three things, the object, its metadata, and the current provider's commitment statement. We use as, a, as an overall framework um, METS, um, the format that was developed at the Library of Congress for um, maintaining uh, information about digital objects. We use that as a framework and within that we may plug in then other um, metadata elements relating to uh, items like oh, elements like um, preservation and description. So for preservation we would use the premise standard for um, descriptive metadata. We'd use the uh, descriptive standard which is appropriate to the, uh, the type of material. So in the case of books and serials, traditional material that is, that is catalogued by the library, we would use something like the, the Mark 21 or Mark XML uh, descriptive uh, framework, use uh, the new RDA, um, Resource Description and, Access, Description and Access Standard for uh, cataloging rules for that material. But for something like manuscript material, we would use uh, a different set of descriptive standards which are appropriate to that archival world. So, for example, the ISAD-G standard for um, uh, general materials. We might, in the case of doing some detailed digitization of uh, a manuscript, particular Asian materials at the moment, we're experimenting with the uh, text encoding initiative um, uh, metadata standard for enriching the descriptive information around the manuscript itself and also creating metadata. We're, we're holding that in our integrated archive and manuscript system and we are then exporting that to uh, users as required. With commercial material often you can uh, use standard identifiers such as in the case of an ebook, an ISBN or an e-journal, an ISSN to um, sometimes derive additional data to enhance the description. But in the case of the unique um, manuscript and uh, older digital material, that's much harder to do due to the lack of um, widely available unique identifiers for that type of material. But one thing we are also looking at doing is, where possible, enhancing um, certain elements within the uh, descriptive metadata itself through the addition of things like the new international standard name identifier, the effectively the ISBN for um, uh, authors effectively, a unique identifier that enables us to assign identities. Incredibly wide range of material to deal with, a, a huge amount of uh, uh, challenge to, uh, to handle and a lot of expe expectations to, uh, to, to deal with as well and that's always perhaps the, uh, the, the greatest challenge of all because people are always seeing the most cutting edge um, developments in the world. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it both useful and informative. Many thanks to Shebnin, British Library and British Library staff for supporting the project. Mm -hmm.